AM 590, KXSP, Omaha's ESPN Radio. It's time for the Metro's only racing talk show. The Front Stretch, presented by Joe's Karting and Council Bluffs. Now, here's Dan Taylor, Buddy Ray, and Andrew Kosiski. Good morning, race fans. This is The Front Stretch, presented by Joe's Karting and Council Bluffs. Get all of your booking, prices, hours, events, pictures, videos, Buddy's profile. You can find it all online. Joe's Carding.com. That's Carding with a K. What are you shaking your head for? Why is it every Sunday morning I'm looking at Andrew over here stretching and I'm half asleep and you're like the most ADD squirrel I've ever seen. You're just like happy go chipper. Yeah. Good lord. There's a reason why we can't have shiny things in the studio. I get easily distracted. Ooh, tinfoil. Tinfoil. Let's talk about Bristol Motor Speedway. And ladies and gentlemen, I think we've begun to return back to the old style Bristol racing, at least to where there is racing at Bristol. It was a fun it's race. It's the single low line where the only way to really get around somebody is to move them. There was actually an option to go low. It was difficult. The passing below the high line in the middle and the low line was incredibly difficult, but there was a couple of guys, especially Jeff Gordon, that got it done. Uh, so a, a fantastic race. I was... Uh, very, very happy with the result. Andrew, you and I sat down at Quaker Steak and Lube uh, and in- enjoyed the Boom Boom Shrimp, which, if you haven't had the Boom Boom Shrimp, go. it is my new cocaine. It is amazing. Oh, So we enjoyed that, a couple of beers, and we watched the whole race. Had uh, I picked Jeff Gordon to win, and I got really irritated when he wrecked, and there was a unanimous cheer <laughs> in the in the bar. <laughs> I mean, there was people clear over and the other bar that I could hear cheering when Jeff Gordon wrecked. Uh, I don't think his fan base has grown quite like I'd assumed, but uh, Jeff Gordon really kind of screwed me in the point standings for our Pickums contest. But uh, let's talk about some of the results as far as we saw from Bristol Motor Speedway. Uh, good day. Good, good day for uh, Casey Kane. I tell you what, that kid's on a tear. And I say kid, he's like, what, six years older than me. Uh, well, I think he's about your age, younger than you. Is he 30? I think he's younger than you. I don't think he's younger than me, is he? Uh, anyways, uh, your top 10. Jamie McMurray gets himself his first top 10 in 2013. Paul Menard has a good race. Brian Vickers in the 55. First time he sat down in the 55. Looked gets good. himself a top 10. He, he does look good. I mean, I didn't have a lot of good things to say about him after the 2011 season when he was racing for Red Bull Racing and he kind of lost his full-time ride. But since he sat down part-time in that 55, he's really shown that he's not the driver I thought he was at the end of 2011. Yeah, but don't you think he had a little bit better equipment at Bristol than he did back well, at the Red Bull? But it, wa- it wasn't era. necessarily equipment. It was the whole thing. At, I believe it was Richmond when he, him and Kenseth just kept wrecking. He kept wrecking everybody. He brought out like six cautions, and after a while I was like, okay, eventually you're going to have to get black flagged. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely enjoying him racing now. Uh, Ryan Newman got himself uh, seventh place. Dale Earnhardt Jr., another top ten finish. He finished sixth. Clint Boyer gets a top five. Uh, Kurt Busch, not Kyle, Kurt Busch in the furniture row number 78. You and I, bud, when we were watching the race, we're rooting him on. He was impressive. <laughs> yeah. He was working his butt off to get that low line to work, and even though he really couldn't complete the pass, he didn't fall way back. You know, if you go back to Phoenix, even Kurt in Phoenix looked pretty impressive. Uh, Phoenix or Las Vegas? Phoenix. Okay. Uh, what, he got himself a, let's see. Because he was running up front there for a while. Yeah, but he had some issues. Where's he at? He finished 27th. I think he... Uh, Blew a tire or something? I think he blew a tire, but he was running like eighth at one time. Yeah, in, uh, he Phoenix. got himself up there. But have you noticed since the media's kind of left him alone because nobody wants to talk to him, it's like he's actually doing a little bit better? Yeah, well, I think it he's, is. I think it he's is. trying. Like back when he used to run for Roush and that, I think he's trying to win again because he has to. He's got to try as hard as he can. He's got to show his skills. And that's what he did at Roush when he won his championship. And then after that, he blew up to be... Some wannabe legend. Did you, guys, did you guys ever see the, uh, I don't remember what they called it, but it was basically the uh, Kurt Bush. I'll cry a little bit and make everyone feel sorry for the way I've acted the last 10 years. I didn't get piece. to see that special. That's basically what it was. He did kind of cry a little bit, but he said that a lot of his anger issues come because the media deliberately pokes him. And yeah, they do. They mm-hmm. want a story, so they go and shove a microphone in his face because they know he's going to blow up. And I think, you know, when you become friends with the media, they won't do that as much. And I, I think that's been his whole thing between uh, being over Phoenix Racing and now over a Furniture Row. He he wants to stop being the bad guy. 
so good good race for Kurt Busch gets himself a fourth place finish. Our uh, former our, our reigning Sprint Cup champion Brad Keselowski comes home third. Kyle Busch comes home second, and Casey Kane gets the win. As far as the points are concerned, Brad Keselowski takes over the points lead. Dale Earnhardt Jr. jumps up another spot. Jimmy Johnson has a rough day. Uh, he blew a right front and finished. I gotta find him. <laughs> it's small typing. I apologize. Twenty uh, second finished uh, three laps down. So. Rough day for the 48 team. They were up there the entire day uh, making it happen, and it kind of seemed like – I wouldn't want to say he had a car to win, but he had a top-five car. Yeah. I think he definitely had a top-five car. Uh, out of all those top ten right there, I think the uh, the team to beat so far this year consistently is the Keselowski. That that two team is just looking strong, top-five every week so I'm going to disagree with you. I think a driver that's racing better and a team that's doing better is Matt Kenseth in that 20 team, but the only difference is that Matt has been wrecked out at Daytona, blew an engine at Phoenix, won the race at Las Vegas, and then got wrecked out racing second. I mean, when was the last time we heard the guy leading, wrecking, and taking out the second placement? Even though, you know, uh, when Jeff Gordon was leading the race, he blew a tire. Uh, I, I, I honestly, I think Matt Kenseth is driving harder. He's driving with aggression. He's got attitude. That team is clicking. And I think he could whoop up on Casey Kane, or uh, sorry, uh, uh, Brad Keselowski any day of the week. But I know what you're saying, though. Brad's got everything going together. What I have going against me is that I have, uh, uh, Matt's got three DNFs now out of four races. <laughs> uh, 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 I mean, yep, you're right. Tinfoil. <sighs> what? <laughs> <laughs> That's your results from, from Bristol Motor Speedway. We're going to get your guys' final opinions on Bristol Motor Speedway and the fireworks that happened between former teammates Joey Logano and Danny Hamlin uh, following that race. We'll talk about that coming up in turn two when we get our nuts and bolts of the NASCAR weekend. This is the Front Stretch presented by Joe's Carding on AM590, Omaha's ESPN Radio. In 1999, Wade Cross decided he was tired of overpaying for shocks, so he created FX Shocks. Now FX suspension customers reach across the United States with countless wins and championships, including including national champion in three major IMCA classes, plus Super Nationals champions in all four of the Saturday night's main events. Get your FX shocks today. One-on-one consultation is waiting for you at 308-383-9609. 308-383-9609. This is Andrew from Kaziski Auto Parts. Kaziski Auto Parts is an insurance quality used parts supplier that can match your foreign or domestic car or truck needs. If you have a damaged or broke down car or truck, we guarantee a clean and quality part in next day fashion. Kaziski Auto Parts, your neighborhood premium recycle parts supplier. Call any Kaziski Auto Parts salesman today by dialing 402-731-4592 or visit us at 5040 I Street in Omaha. Kaziski Auto Parts, our quality used parts will match your car or truck's needs. Are you ready for fast-paced, adrenaline-pumping, wheel-to-wheel racing right here in the Metro? Get to Joe's Karting in Council Bluffs and see what it's like to race real go-karts. Joe's Karting knows it's no fun to race go-karts at 10 miles per hour, so they ripped the governors out, and now the only restriction is how good you are at racing. It's full-throttle, white-knuckle racing every day of the week. Head over to joeskarting.com for hours, prices, and specials, or give Buddy a call today and set up your group races at 712-256-5278. We're working the high line into turn two on the front stretch, presented by Joe's Carding, online at joescarding.com. Taking the high line into turn two. Oh, you want to take the low line, middle I'll, line? I'll take the high line. Andrew, you got middle? I just don't want either of you to blow a tire because I don't want to rear end anybody. Good call. All right, I'm going to take... You know what? I'm just sitting in the pit. So we're going into turn two here on the front stretch presented by Joe's Carding at Council Bluffs. Uh, Bristol Motor Speedway, we talked about uh, last turn, the fireworks between Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano. I didn't see, maybe I just missed it. Guys, did you happen to see where Joey may have deserved what Denny did? Do you? I guess, do you think maybe Denny was a little out of line? Way out of line. Yeah. Uh, no, Joey, we talked about this on... Uh, we were sitting at Quaker Steak. I go, oh, he just flat out dumped him. He did. And then we heard after the race what Denny thought he thought happened, and I was like, no, nah, I don't think so. Buddy, what did you see? I saw racing. It was a racing incident? What, what, what part of it was a racing incident if it was a racing incident? I mean, to what, me, I was what did looking, you see? I was proportionately speed 
on one car slowing down to speed on the other car speeding up i didn't see a big deal there but you know i see it as a racing incident but if i really really if, if god himself came down and i had to choose i would have to say he dumped him <laughs> so was so, it racing or did he dump him so, <laughs> what proportionally so, happened so, here? So you're on the fence of whether or not yes. Hamlin dumped him, even though he said, yeah, I meant to wreck him. You're still on the fence whether or not it was on purpose. Well, those two are so mad at each other right now that if I did the exact same thing to you, I'd be like, yeah, I, I meant to dump Dan. Okay, here's what happened uh, from what I saw. Legato does a slide job. Danny doesn't appreciate it. And when you go up and do a slide job, your momentum is broken. So you're going to be slower coming off the corner. Typically, the driver that you just did the slide job on will let it go unless it's coming to the end of the race and they don't want to give up the position. Hamlin didn't appreciate it, ran up on him in the corner and hit him. It didn't work. And so he gets into his right rear quarter panel and spins him. And this was Hamlin's comments after the race. Got to control your car, and he slid up into me, and really he would have been in the garage with no radiator in it had I not checked up uh, twice. So, you know, I meant to run into him, didn't mean to, to spin him out, but, uh, you know, his day was fine. We finished bad, he finished bad. It's, uh, you know, it's even. Those guys exchanged words uh, <laughs> after the race. Logano, I give him a little bit of credit, stuck his head in there, and you could tell he said something before the uh, FedEx team pushed him away, and this is what Denny said what Logano had said to him. Uh, I see he was coming for me, so I usually don't see him, so it's usually not a factor. <laughs> <laughs> Little shot across the bow there. Uh, but yeah, uh, Ham- Hamlin definitely did dis- did but, need to wreck him. Yeah, but with what you, st- what you asked me earlier when I said I was on the fence, he said right there he meant to get into him, but he didn't mean to spin him out. Didn't mean to wreck him. Didn't mean to spin him out. He meant to get hit him, but not spin him out. I've seen that I, done a hundred times no, in dirt I, track racing. I'll get up, I'll put my front bumper on your back bumper, but I may not I may not have the mindset that I want to spin you out. I just want to let you know I'm there and I'm not real happy. But he he did end up spinning but him out. But he did it in the wrong yeah. area of I the hear, racetrack. I hear what you're saying, but I think he did that to cover himself just in case NASCAR decided to find him. If he'd have come out and said, you dang right, I meant to put him in the wall. That leaves it to no interpretation. But if he said, I meant to rub him but not wreck him, then NASCAR doesn't really have much of a ground to stand on because its boys have at it. Okay, so I, th- I think Denny just used that to cover his bases. But, you know, that, that's that's the beauty of this sport is I get to agree and you get to agree and we're never right. <laughs> no, but I do uh, okay. love this boys have at it. I do too. After the race, a Twitter war battle between the two of them. Uh, Denny and, and Joey had a little bit of a conversation on, uh, on Twitter is what seems to be the cool thing to do now. Joey says to Denny, hey... Great job protecting that genius brain of yours by keeping your helmet on. Denny then replied, why is that? What are you going to do? Kim just basically calling him out, and Hamlin replies back, I'll show you my appreciation and gratitude. Take me through the process, guys. You, you've, been, you've had this happen before. Is one of them making another call to say, let's, let's bury the hatchet and, and apologize? I think Logano's on the path of burying the hatchet and let's move on. I think... Hamlin, and, and we talked about this before we went on air, Hamlin has got an ego or something going on here lately. Ever since he got fined from NASCAR, it's almost like he's using it to his advantage to play up the media hype and the publicity, in my opinion. Maybe Andrew? maybe he's trying to act like Brad Keselowski or something. I don't know. He won the championship last year, the Bush Brothers or something. But yeah, he's his head is completely swelled up and all season like that. And I, I used to like Denny. I, I never liked him, but I never disliked him. And this year it's like I could care less if the guy even drove, and I love Joe Gibbs' racing team, and I'm just like, man, I don't even care if he's a part of it anymore. It's just, it's getting ridiculous, and I think Joey Logano, I don't think is over by no means. I don't think he's, I think he's going to eventually try to take him out, do something because that's just. I thought it was uncalled for this week, and and I don't know, but um, Denny Hamlin's pretty good at yelling on the Twitter and yeah. The, Tough yeah, guy. but the one thing you see here is you get you see Danny Hamlin, like you said, Dan, he's shooting, you know, shots over the bow and Logano's like, Yeah, whatever, okay, whatever. Now I agree with you, Andrew. I don't think from a driver mentality that Logano's over it, but I don't think he's gonna put it out there in the public eye. They're just gonna settle it on the track and behind the scenes between the two. Oh of them. no, you must have missed his post race comment because what he said to Denny in the car was, I'm, I'm coming for you, you, buddy. <laughs> I'm coming for you. 
And that's when Denny yeah, said, but that I was, usually that don't have at, to worry that, about it. But that's what I'm saying. He, they're going to do it at the track behind the scenes. Now, they were at the track, but after everything was said and done this weekend, you see Denny Hamlin doing what he does on Twitter. You know, of course, you're going to call yeah, somebody I, out. The other guy's going to respond. I think they're, they're both keyboard commandos. And I think Joey Logano, just because he's more of a clean cut, pretty boy looking guy, I think he can hold a grudge just as much as Jeff Gordon, Kevin Harvick, Dale Sr. could. I, 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 think, agree. I think he can hold a grudge just like these guys. And Andrew and I were talking about it. I, I would not be surprised. If the first opportunity Logano got, he put Hamlin in the wall. Well, I think it, and then again, I kind of am thinking, I wonder if there was some bad blood at Joe Gibbs that last season to where if right when Joey was leaving, you know, maybe Joey not so much being jealous that Kent has been running so good in his old car. Maybe Hamlin could have said something like, it's a good thing he's gone, you know, because he didn't help this team or something. And now that, now that they're seeing this, Joey was, Joey was beating Denny and he was way faster than he was. And Denny has no right to say, He's never around me because I, I haven't That's a seen good Denny. Point, Andrew. Denny's only been good one race, I think, this year so far. Well, let me let me pose this to you. I read an interesting article earlier in the week uh, from NASCAR.com. Jeff Hammond uh, posted an article about, is Denny having a bit of an inferiority complex here? Let's look at the way it is. I mean, he is the senior driver at Joe Gibbs Racing. He's been there longer than Kyle Busch and obviously been there longer than Matt Kenseth, yet they signed Matt Kenseth to a big deal this year, and all of a sudden, Matt's getting the, he's going to come in and teach Denny and Kyle all this stuff they need to know to win a championship. Maybe Denny's sitting back there going, what do I need to know? I challenged for a championship a couple of years ago. Am I just some schmuck? So is this him kind of, the comment, the Twitter, the the, fi- the, the after the, the argument was over with NASCAR, he had to do another comment to get the last word in is this some sort of a like an inferiority complex inferiority complex because he's not the top dog at Joe I, Gibbs I think Racing. there's an inferior inferior you know I can't in, say that word. inferiority inferiority yeah I ain't gonna say that word but I think <laughs> I think that separates the champion from the runner-up that year is because Denny right now he he needs to listen to Matt Kenseth the dude is obviously proving that he's the best at Joe Gibbs yeah. Racing right now. Now, Matt Kenseth, he's looking really good this year. You got Denny being Denny, or for whatever you want to well, call it's, it. But, but it's you not know, his you know typical who's character, gonna, though. You know who's going to end up benefiting from this if Denny doesn't pipe down? Bush. Because Bush is going to... Everybody's going to be like, well, you know, Bush has had his issues in the past, but when you look at the comments that Bush made and how he presented himself at Bristol, he made himself look way more mature than Hamlin did. I think Bush is secure, though. M&M's likes him. He's a really good racer. The I, dude comes from the back to the front every week. I don't think it's what he's saying. I think he was saying was that the heat's always been on Kyle Bush for making the comments. I okay. think Denny's taking that heat. Right. And so it's allowing Kyle to kind of... Back away uh, from same the thing, media. Same thing with like Kurt, Kurt Bush, where he's yep. kind of a furniture row and the spotlight's not on him as bright. Uh, I think this is a... a I, I'm not getting enough attention. Hey, look at me kind of a thing. Hopefully it doesn't go on for too long because, like you just said, it's not that you didn't dislike or like Denny Hamlin, but the comments lately. I was on his side right up until after the announcements that Denny wasn't going to pay it, but they're going to take it out of my winnings. And then NASCAR announced their statement of, you know, blah, blah, blah. And everything was settled. They were done with that penalty. Denny had to go out there and say, well, I won. NASCAR was wrong, and screw all my spineless drivers who didn't stick up for me. He just had to get one last word in, and I think that's that. Yeah. Uh, not think that is the point where I went. Okay, you lost me. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I, I've fallen off the Denny Hamlin bandwagon. I liked him. I wanted him to win the championship a couple of years ago. Uh, I always thought he was a good good guy, but he just. I don't know. His his attitude last couple of weeks has kind of tainted me. I guess I should say Bristol ratings. We're up 8% from last year. I think we can accredit that to the great racing at Las Vegas, so people are tuning in to watch it. You and I had a pretty big debate when we were watching the race because those stands were empty. But yeah, empty. I think, I think a big majority of that was up until about 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. that morning of the race, their time, they were still calling for rain and the race to be pretty much canceled. So I think that had to do a lot with the turnout, but uh, hopefully, hopefully, this race will fix that for the for the night race. I, I agree with you to a point that I could see a lot of people leaving because of the rain out, or you know the the possibility of a rain out up until ten or eleven. But and had it, it been a sunny and eighty degree day, I don't think you'd see those stands completely sold out. 
not completely, but not near that empty. Not near that it's, empty. I mean, let's all face it, it. It's incredibly expensive to go to a NASCAR race. I think it's well worth the dollar to go because you get so much more than you spend when you go to like an NFL, NBA, or MLB game. Uh, but it still does cost a lot. And if if you're looking to drop $1,500 to take you and your family to a race and there's a chance of rain, a good chance of rain, I'm you're not going to make those plans. You're not going to book that hotel room. You're not going to buy those tickets. You're going to stay home. So it, I think that was the major cause of that. Hopefully, Auto Club will be different. This will be a good race this week, and I, I'm very excited about that. Very, very excited. Uh, just around the corner, we're going to talk with Joe Kaziski of I-80 Speedway. And Kaziski Auto Parts, a big supporter of our show. We're going to talk to Joe about the spring meltdown and what we can expect. And also, we're going to finally get to the interview with uh, Joe Proctor, announcer for Shelby County Speedway. That's all coming up in Turn 3. This is the Front Stretch, presented by Joe's Carding on AM590, Omaha's ESPN Radio. Bring the hottest gift to the gift exchange by bringing a gift card to Quaker Steak and Lube. Now through December 25th, for every $25 gift card purchased to the Lube, score a $5 bonus card free. Give the gift of Lube Lube and the Best Wings USA with gift cards to the Lube. Now through December 25th, every $25 card purchase gets you a $5 bonus card free. Treat yourself and your friends this holiday season and grab your gift cards to Quaker Steak and Lube. 3220 Mid-America Drive in Council Bluffs. More info at thelube.com. Are you ready for fast-paced, adrenaline-pumping, wheel-to-wheel racing right here in the Metro? Get to Joe's Karting in Council Bluffs and see what it's like to race real go-karts. Joe's Karting knows it's no fun to race go-karts at 10 miles per hour, so they ripped the governors out, and now the only restriction is how good you are at racing. It's full-throttle, white-knuckle racing every day of the week. Head over to joeskarting.com for hours, prices, and specials, or give Buddy a call today and set up your group races at 712-256-5278. Time to grab another tear-off and make your move. We're headed into turn three on the front stretch, presented by Joe's Carding. Heading into turn three on the front stretch, presented by Joe's Carding and Council Bluffs, online at joescarding.com. We're about to talk with Joe Kaziski of I-80 Speedway, Kaziski Auto Parts. Thank you so much for sitting out again with us, Joe. Thank you, Dan. It's been a couple of weeks since we've been able to talk to you and, uh, and... Good to have you back, uh, and I, I want to say I'll first, we really do appreciate all the help you gave us in the off season with getting the legends of the dirt all set together and and sitting in the studio with us and kind of playing around with us for a couple hours each week and doing the show. So I appreciate everything you guys helped us out with. I, I hope it all worked out. And I hope the show, you know, uh, it helped it build it and gets it thriving for this year. And you know, we talked about a lot of other ideas at that time because you know we're back behind the show. We're not Joe's carding, but. We're back behind the show all the way. Tell you what, that Rural Wheels car show uh, last weekend, I heard an awful lot about the front stretch, and I uh, want to say thanks to all the listeners, but, you know, the, uh, the the Legends of the Dirt, that was a big, big deal with a lot of the listeners. They loved listening to Burke Hoffer and Bloomquist and the Kaziskis and whatnot. And if you missed any of those interviews, including the Dirt Track Roundtable we did down at Quaker Steak and Lube, you can always go to our Facebook page. Just search the front stretch, and you'll be able to find all of the audio on there, and you can re-listen to the shows. And we had some great interviews, but uh, let's talk spring meltdown. We're not too far away from uh, my first Dirt Track race. I know there was uh, last weekend, I believe Beatrice had a race. Yeah, last Um, weekend Beatrice raced. And then is there another one? That happened this weekend? This weekend, I'm um, a cool junction's racing. Yeah, and now, obviously now. the show airs on Sunday. We record on Wednesday. There's a snowstorm coming, so we're not entirely sure if the race got it underway. But If um, they're racing today, it'll be the features. Well, not Sunday. Sundays are the features. Oh, there's, to- there's a race on Sunday? It's a Saturday-Sunday oh, okay. show. Okay, okay. I thought it was a Friday-Saturday show. My mistake. So, yeah, okay, there could be a chance of racing. Um, but uh, let's talk spring meltdown. April 5th and 6th, I-80 Speedway, exit 420 in Greenwood. Uh, what do you guys have lined up for April 5th? April 5th, we got uh, ASCS Regional uh, 360s with the Nebraska 360 guys together, which you know how fast them sons of guns are. They're really good. <laughs> we got the MLRA uh, CBC Corn Belt Clash coming. Uh, that's a great late model show every year. And then we've got the B-Mods coming on Friday night, and then Saturday night the B-Mods stay home, and the A-Mods get to come out and play. Ah, and Bud, you're going to be racing that Friday night, right? Oh, baby Jesus, help then, them all. I'm then coming. We're going to be in the pits on Saturday kind of talking with people, and, and uh, we're hoping, we're kind of planning right now that we're going to try to get some interviews and plug them into the show on Sunday morning. We'll see how well that works out. It basically, it all comes down to how much we drink on Saturday night. <laughs> uh, yep. So... 
probably not going to have much of the show, but but uh, we'll try to keep you guys up to date with that. Uh, I think we talked to Jack Dover a couple of weeks ago. Didn't he mention he was going to make his first appearance in the Midwest at the at the spring meltdown? I believe, yeah. I well, actually, I think he was going to Wichita this weekend, and then he or or the next weekend. But I do know he's going to be there April fifth. That'll yeah. be that'll be his second weekend of yeah. race, and he's okay. going to Wichita the week before, and then Jack will be there that what's weekend. What's the What's the race in Wichita called? I just saw on his Facebook page he announced for the first time he it's wasn't going to be able to make NCRA it. It's an NCRA sanctioned show, but I don't know what it okay what it's called. I can't remember what the name of the race was that he said he w- just the funds weren't there and he wasn't going to be able to make the trip. So I wonder uh, if it was that race. No, the the ones that he isn't going to be able to make the trip is the Devil's Bowl this weekend. That's it. That's it. Okay. Well, uh, anyways, April 5th and 6th, uh, i-80speedway.com is the website you can go to. Uh, all the ticket information is up there, and uh, that's an important website to keep your eye on also you guys' Facebook page because we were talking before we started the interview we don't really know depending on the how much snow we get this coming weekend depends on if the weather is going to cooperate but you guys are going to do a good job probably on your Facebook page keeping everybody up to date my, my daughter does a great job on the Facebook page she's on it daily to try to help keep people up the best we can right now we are having a new website created and it should I, I was hoping for it to be out by now I'm hoping within the next week to 10 days so there's some of the stuff we're not getting on the website like we should and i want to be up front with you so watch the facebook page if you can Mm -hmm. if you can't call the office if you've got any questions because uh, if we're missing it it it's so hard to try to get on the old page because we have to call the provider in Mm -hmm. order to have them put some of the stuff on and the new one we'll be able to handle through our office now joe uh i'm not going to go into air but uh mr ackerman uh, who works at ID? He had some health issues. Now, if I call down, if I'm a driver, which I am, and I call down to ID Speedway uh, office there on their phone number, is there going to be somebody there that can take my registration over the phone? I, I had my I had my daughter was there uh, while Lee was in the hospital. Lee's back at work now. Well, what happened with Lee? Uh, he I, had I a, he this. had a light stroke uh, about ten days ago. Now he had a light hmm. stroke and he was in the hospital all last week. He got out on Thursday and. Uh, the doctor let him come to work for a couple hours on Monday, and then he worked all day yesterday, and he worked all day today. So, you know, he's he's back in par. Uh, his He's got a little bit of a speech that's not perfect yet, and he's got one hand that's not gripping real well yet, but they want him to go back to work, so that's where he's at. Yeah. Well, that's uh, sorry to hear that. I, I I didn't know that he'd had any health issues, but it's good good he's back on his feet though. Yeah, he's back on his feet and he's answering the phone and he talked to some people and already got the the bug eater bash. They've signed up for the bug eater bash coming that second weekend. Uh, you know, if you call in now, you get a sign up for free. There won't be no uh, registration fee for the bug eater bash. I don't know how the spring meltdown works. My daughter takes care of most of that, so I don't know how yeah. that one works. I tell you what, give, give him a call tomorrow Monday morning when the offices open up. What's the phone number for uh, I eighty? Office? 402-342-3453. Okay. I've been talking to a lot of drivers about that bug eater bash, and you can't help but giggle a little bit when you hear, when I tell people, I'm going to the bug eater bash, and they're like, you're eating bugs? I, I, I don't think it's people that you say that. It's the way you say it that they're laughing about. <laughs> I'm going to a bug eater bash. Because I say it, and I go, yeah, I'm going to the bug eater bash, and then Bud says, I'm going to the bug eater bash. <laughs> well, the redneck, it's that time we were talking about your schizophrenic redneck. Schizophrenic redneck, that, that's right. But yeah, I mean, that is such a cool name, the bug eater bash, you know, and I've told a lot of people you know we're, we're here talking to joe on the front stretch about the uh, the spring meltdown coming up april 5th and 6th but you know i, I gotta do a shout out to id speedway i mean the schedule this year i mean i don't care who you are what you are what where you come from what nationality you are there is something for everybody at that racetrack i mean i think the only thing that we're not missing yet and who's to say it wouldn't happen is soapbox derby races down the front stretch uh, i mean never, <laughs> never never tempt me you can always have them <laughs> i'm hey, telling you i mean you got this you got sprint cars you got world of outlaws you got the super late models coming i mean my god what more can, what, what else can you have out there let's talk about the soapbox derby race what's it going to pay out <laughs> yeah. I, I may be, this may be something i may be able to win it there you go there you go <laughs> April 5th and 6th is the uh, spring meltdown, first big race of the year for you guys. And uh, hopefully, if everything goes right, uh, I know I'm going to be down there on the 5th and uh, the 6th. So uh, any other details, i-80speedway.com, your guys' Facebook page. And what's the phone number again? 402-342-3453. We talk, okay. The only thing I want to tell you is make sure you bring a coat. 
it's going to be it chilly. It's cold that night. You guys, you know? Mona's going to have hot hot, hot chocolate. Oh again? yeah, she'll have hot chocolate. I believe she's already getting her chili warmed up for the oh. for the chili and for the chili dogs How about and coffee? chili nachos. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. always got coffee. coffee. You know what? Mm-hmm. Now, now, Bud, you always ask about coffee. The coffee doesn't always make it to the pits because they sell it about as fast as they can in the Grand Slam. I would imagine so. The one thing I do want to say as a driver, a lot of the tracks, and I'm not going to name tracks, but a lot of the tracks, they'll see a little bit of cold weather coming or a possibility of rain. They'll cancel. True story. I go out to ID Speedway for the Cornerstone Classic, I want to say three years ago, and it flooded. You had in Joe, maybe you know what I'm talking about. And there, one, I think one of your brothers was up to his neck in water, literally at a culvert. <laughs> and everybody's like, "There's no way in God's name we're going to race ID Speedway." And you got the races on, so drivers, don't worry about the weather forecast. If there's anybody that can get the races in, it's going to be at ID Speedway. If we can get them done, we're going to be racing. I I will guarantee you that much. Uh, let's just find out what this snowstorm they're talking about Sunday has and what the future of the forecast is because we do have some work to do to the racetrack and I want to be up front with everybody. We will work our hardest to make sure it's done because we got people excited. I had people call today from Missouri wondering if we're going to have a practice and what we're going to have and things like that. And uh, Right now, I'd like to let everybody know that if we do have a practice, it'll be the Thursday night before mm-hmm. the Friday and Saturday, the 5th and 6th. But I don't want to make that I'm, i'll probably make it official tomorrow i got to make sure i've got everybody in place uh our our biggest thing isn't the racetrack getting it in shape bud it's the water if it's going to freeze to get to the bathrooms we don't have heat in the bathrooms and we and in the kitchens we're usually all right there but it's the water lines that freeze up before they get to the kitchen yeah. so that would be the only thing that would get us is is the water lines and things like on that. on the thursday night practice as a driver myself uh on thursday night i come out and i practice can I load the car up in the trailer and just drop the trailer right there in the pits or on the outside instead but of driving back ab- and forth? Absolutely. We don't want you to waste your gas going back and forth. We'll give you a spot. They'll be if, if the guys from the MLRA series or the Sprint Car Series knows this is going on, they will be here Thursday night to run their practices, and they'll be staying right there at the track on Thursday. So just to kind of give you an idea, you know, if, if that's what we can get done. I mean, we're going to let all the local guys uh, practice, too. It won't be just – B right. mods and A mods and just the guys that are racing that weekend. We got them guys coming to the Bug Eater Bash, so and they've got Hornets and they've got Hobbies and they've got you know Grand Nationals. I want them all there to practice on Thursday night if they the, want to uh, come. The Hornets, do you eat those or do you race those? Well, it's a Bug Eater Bash, so you know what do you think? You got a Hornet, <laughs> bud. Now you tell me. <laughs> It's the spring meltdown, April 5th and 6th at I-80 Speedway. I-80speedway.com is where you can go to get more information. Also, check out their Facebook page. It will be updated daily on as far as the conditions of the track and if the race is going to happen or not. We're going to keep our fingers crossed and do a little bit of a dirt track dance to make sure it does. Uh, Phone number again for the office? 402 342 Now, something else I'd like you to make sure that if – Get on our text blast. You can see it on the website. I don't remember the exact code numbers. Uh, It'll be on Facebook. But get on that text blast because as soon as we cancel something or as soon as something would happen, it goes out on the text blast. So that's a real good way if you don't have time to get your – I mean, everybody carries their phone going up and down the road. They may not be able to see the Facebook, but – some people have still got the old flip phones that they can look and see it on their on their text blast. So make sure you get signed up. Joe Kaziski of I-80 Speedway. Thank you so much, Joe, for sitting down with us. Now, a couple of months ago, while we were doing the whole off-season Legends of the Dirt and talking with local dirt tracks about their changes in 2013, we sat down with Joe Proctor, who's the announcer for Shelby County Speedway. Because of the Super Bowl, because we got bumped that day, we weren't able to play that interview. So we finally gotten around to be able to play Joe's interview. And Joe came down and sat down in the studio with us so without further ado here's joe proctor announcer for shelby county speedway we started off by asking joe what were some of the changes that shelby county speedway has made in preparation for the 2013 season uh not a significant amount of changes there is going to be uh some work done with the uh race director position of course i don't have all of the information there but i am under the impression that uh Kenny's going to step down and go back to some you know, racing himself, and uh, they're going to the average. You know, the search is on actually for the new race director, unless they just haven't told me that the new ones, the it new ones, be, been chosen. It may be you. It could, and as far as I know, right now it could be me. <laughs> Probably doesn't come with a pay raise either. Uh, <laughs> not not many things in this sport come with a pay raise. And moving right on along. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right on along. <laughs> uh, instead of just peanuts, they'll throw you nachos every once in a while. Uh, yeah, maybe a bottle of water if it's yeah. you know if it, they got any hot water left. That's from, if it's hot out. <laughs> yeah, 
I got a feeling since if it's anything like 2012, it's it's going to be a, a, a hell of a year again. Probably a temperature break of about 120 degrees uh, is when I'll get a bottle of water. I could use a summer of about <laughs> 85, 90 degrees. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. No wind, you know, just yeah. a nice light breeze, 70 degrees year round. A little bit of rain every once in a while. Yeah. You know, uh, talk about Shelby County. Uh, give us a little details about it. I, everyone knows in the show. I'm I'm a bit of a, uh, a newbie to the to the racing world. So, uh, what races does Shelby? What nights does Shelby County Raceway? You guys race on and and what time do you guys get to open ticket prices and such? Every Saturday night, uh, April through September. Uh, Saturday nights we kick things off. Gates open about five o'clock. Racing will kick off about seven o'clock with hot laps right before that. Um, you got six classes of racing there featuring all the way, and it's all IMCA competition. They're IMCA sanctioned. Starts out with the uh, Sport Compact Division, moving on to the Hobby Stock Division, then the uh, Sport Modified Division, the Stock Car Division, the Modifieds, and the Late Models, all IMCA. Uh, I think anymore the Modifieds are pretty much the premier division. Uh, late Models, I don't know if they really used to be or you know are considered – premier division but that's they're kind of trading off week to week is the final feature of that but uh, we get a great crowd we got a you know a lot of great people up in harlan iowa and harlan's just uh, 11 miles off of interstate 80 about 45 minutes straight east of council bluffs omaha metro area Uh, we get a great crowd up there a lot of great people we've got a great racers uh we've had you know last year we had two slmr shows roll into town that was a great you know great thing to see those cars come in because the late models up there aren't featured near as much in Harlan, and the modifieds more a little bit more are. So it's great to see more and different late models come in and put on the show that they put on. And Joe, they did put on a show. If you know, if you remember, oh, the first night it was a show. Yeah, it was a heck of a show. Um, I think we they probably racked up more parts bills in that one heat race alone. Then they did throughout the rest of the season. <laughs> For the whole SLMR series and everybody that included. <laughs> but it was great to have the SLMR guys up there, and uh, they put on a heck of a show, and it's always great to see more in different cars. You know, And I'm used to seeing them in different tracks around, so it's great to be able to bring them up there where I'm at every week and show these people, you know, the people up in Harlan, there's more, you know, more out there. So it's really kind of fun. A lot of uh, talk about certain drivers moving up or moving down classes. You got any insight on what you've heard or know? The one that I am for certain on, and I it, it may have changed by now. You probably know more than I do, bud. But the one that I have known is I that Jesse that. Sobbing, you know, of course, who pretty much owned. That was like I want to. I don't want to say that Shelby County Speedway was his personal ATM, but he had a kind of a ring, you know, around that place. So he's moving into the modified division. Um, the last rumor I heard was that Shannon Anderson was moving up into the stock car division. That is a rumor. I don't know if that's for. I haven't talked to any of those and, guys. So, and he was Sport Compact last year, right? Uh, hobby Stock. Hobby Stock. He's okay. like the Hobby Stock All Galactic driver at Shelby County Speedway. So, okay. well, I know back in December I seen Jesse Sobbing's Amod at the IMS show in Indianapolis, Indiana. So, I think that you're probably right about Jesse Sobbing, and I think that's a good move. I've had people tell me that Jesse ain't going to win no features this year. He won't win. No, and I watched Jesse Sabi race his B mod against a lot of the A mods last year and almost win with that. So I've got confidence. Jesse's going to pick up his number of wins, maybe not as many as the B mods, but I would say l- let's go see him race and have some oh, fun yeah, because exactly. I think it's going to I think it's going to be good for the show wherever he does show up. I, I'm hoping that he races at Harlan, Iowa again. Uh, I'm hoping he races at I-80 Speedway again. Uh, I'm hoping that Jesse is around and. Does some winning again. Because the guy, he puts on, you cannot deny, he puts on a show. And when he gets done, the trophies he gives away to the kids and the way he bounces around and, you know, does the tire burn-offs, it's great for the fans. It's great for the tracks. It's great for racing altogether. Kid's got a little bit of talent, that's for sure. he's got the talent. And he's a good good guy. He's an all-around good guy. He's rather humble. I mean, he can be rather humble at times. But then when you talk about Joe, you talk about he gives the trophy away every single A feature event. He gives away his trophy that he yes. wins. You know, it's it's like it's not so much to him because he's probably got a million of them as it is. But it's not so much to him that that piece of trophy. But it's like give another race fan, a little little race fan, some piece of the night. It, it, it might make it might make one of them little race fans the next Jesse sobbing exactly. by the way he does it because them kids they get believing and they want to be the next one to get out there exactly. in that race car. Did, yeah. did you actually see on? Uh, I, I believe it was Shelby County's Facebook or uh, or Jesse's wife's uh, Facebook, Brandy. There was a picture on Facebook somewhere of a kid with a with a sign in the green that says. 
I love you, Jesse Sobbing, more than Justin Bieber. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That's, wait till uh, I talk to Jesse about that one. Yeah. yeah. That's, that, that, now, now that's a feat. Actually, right I think that might have been Bud holding that sign. <laughs> I'm not not surprised at all. Although I, I would be surprised really? if you could spell Bieber right. That's true. That's true. He might have a beaver or something like that. <laughs> Say, is it Beaver or Bieber? <laughs> oh, God. Again, we're going to have to do some editing. Uh, talking with uh, Joe Proctor of Shelby County. And this is a little bit off topic, but I, I think I got an update on it last year, but I wanted to double check. Did they find that piece of trash that broke into the... Uh, into the raceway last year and ah, stole a bunch of stuff? Yes, they did, actually. From what I understand, they, they caught them because they were bragging about it? <laughs> yeah, you know, if you're going to break in somewhere, don't go tell your buddies or people that you may not that may not like you. Yeah, they weren't bragging. It was some school kids. They went bragging, and apparently that they had some enemies, and the enemy said, well, I got you. So that it all turned around, and they got back pretty much everything that they needed to get back the food of course that was stolen was unfortunately damaged beyond yeah. you know repair or beyond reuse so they had to let that go but uh suppliers around harlan were great and helped us get back for the you know for the night all of the equipment that was stolen the hard equipment the electronics and whatnot got that back fortunately so they didn't cost the track any pro you know any extra money but uh you know it's just one of those things you, you got to kind of look at it like okay it's kids you know and you can't say these darn kids you know you just have to we got to keep plugging on the rate the show must go on so yeah luckily it worked out all right and they did get the uh, perpetrators and they were dealt with firmly good that's is good there, to hear is there any other specials this year besides the tiny london the slmr late model show on labor day weekend uh late model show on labor day weekend the slmr otherwise the tiny london is our end of the year special there's no plans that I know of or I've been alerted of for any other specials beyond that. I believe what uh, the board, you know, the Racers Association in Harlan and Shelby County Speedway believe that their weekly show is a special event every week. Just like, you know, Joe at I-80 Speedway, every week is a special event. Oh, yeah. You know, every oh, yeah. week at a weekly show, it's a special event. And the extra specials, you know, like the SLMR coming in, that'll be another great show, the SLMR, especially on Labor Day weekend. You know, that was traditionally over at I-80 Speedway. Now that's kind of changed. So we'll be having those cars over there. That'll be great. And then a Tiny Lund. Are we going to see them back at the Tiny Lund again? Um, as of right now, they haven't scheduled the Tiny Lund to be part of the SLMR series. I'm, I'm hoping that they decide to go back that Friday night. But they're trying to, they said they had something they was thinking about doing. So, you know, it may get added. Last year, it never got added till about the yeah. middle of June before we got the Tiny Lund added. And, uh, I think they'll probably wait and see how many cars we got following and who it is and things like that, and that'll help them make that decision yeah. to possibly get it back at the Tiny Lund. But I thought it was a great show at the Tiny Lund. That yes, Friday night show there, the Labor Day weekend was the one that was a little harsh. That, that one we a- had a <laughs> few crashes, a little yeah. bit of arguing, a little yeah. bit of almost fist fighting, you know. But <laughs> well, you know, uh, were you there? It, buddy? it happens. No, I wasn't there. Oh, that they night. mentioned fist fighting. I thought maybe you were racing. No, not cat fighting. <laughs> Really, <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun to see you and you know meet you and talk to you and uh, kind of make fun of you. But <laughs> I, I, I I love Buddy to death. He's a great friend of mine. But sometimes he turns in. You remember that punching bag when you were a little kid? Yeah. Had the sand in the bottom the of schmoo. it. Yeah. yeah, and we just we we beat up on him a little bit too much every once in a while. But you know what? He pops right back up again. It's kind of a schmoo, and you know, <laughs> and it's not like he's you know. And of course, we don't really mean it. You know, it's just because it's so easy, Bud. Right, I mean, right. We don't mean it. <laughs> I got a thick skin. <laughs> That's <laughs> a good God. thing. Uh, uh, racing, race, SCS.com. Race, SCS.com. That's the website to go to. Looks like you guys have posted the tentative 2013 schedule. Yeah. Uh, did you mention when the Tiny Lund was? Uh, Tiny Lund should be the second week of September. 13th, 14th, and then a possible rain date on September 15th. Yep. Uh, and then looks like you guys have just your regular weekly racing again on Saturday night, right? Yep. We race every Saturday night. Gates open at? Gates open at about 5 o'clock. Okay. Uh, hot laps will usually kick off about 6.30. Okay. Okay. And ticket prices? Ticket prices ten bucks will get you an adult in the door in the gate. Uh, I believe it's five for kids. I want to say kids that are under twelve, under twelve. Kid, I kids believe kids ten yes. and under get in for free. Ten and under are free. Okay, students eleven to eighteen Ooh. get in for free. That's six. right. That's right. That's where it's different than I eighty. The students and then the young kids. There's a difference there. The students are uh, eleven to eighteen. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, pit passes? Pit passes, I want to say those are $25, and that'll get you $20. $22. $22 will get you into the pits. I think that's the uh, standard IMCA cost. Okay. Bud, chime in there. Uh, Eagles, 20. You're 22. Denison's 25. 
Uh, so it's twenty to twenty five. We've had we've had and people it, on here talking all the time. Uh, twenty five bucks is 25. about the average. Yeah, okay. and then it looks like you guys actually have a deal. You buy ten pit pass punches for two hundred bucks, so you're going to save yourself a couple of dollars. Right, right. You got so, we've got a punch card that you can buy for the pit passes, and it's another thing is when you racers out there. An end of the year bonus, I guess you could say, and you may not know this if you're not racing weekly, but at the banquet, we have a lot of times where we're going to give out pit passes as a door prize, so to speak, at the banquet. Yeah. We gave away probably 10 or 15 of them at our banquet here a couple, you know, a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So it's another, you know, that's a, it's a pit pass. I mean, that's a break to get into the pits for free. You know, it might help you get an extra pit guy in or something like that or help you if you have a rough night. So there's just, an, you know, another bonus that that you may not know about, drivers, that you get a kind of a little bit of an extra incentive. Uh, anything we're leaving out for you guys? Anything last you want to throw in there? Um, you can't miss Harlan's show on Saturday night. They have great racing up there. We do go head-to-head, of course, with with uh, Adams County Speedway, but they have their racers. We have our racers, and we actually do get crossovers. So... If you're in the area in, you know, in uh, southeast Iowa, stop by either track. Stop by Shelby County Speedway on a Saturday night. You'll really enjoy it. Located in Harlan, Iowa, just uh, down on... uh, Highway 59. Highway 59, that's right. I went right past my house. So, (laughs) uh, One of the tracks I've actually made it to, uh, the only track on the SLMR series that I've made it to, besides I-80 in in Eagle, I guess. So I'm excited. This is one of the only tracks I've been to, and I didn't have to go with Bud, so... um, that's plus. <laughs> it's really not. I do enjoy going to the That's races why you made it kids. there. That's why you didn't get lost because you were. <laughs> Bud helps me figure out. Now, why, why are they turning left right here? Because there's a wall right there, yeah. Dan. So. <laughs> but Bud helps me out a lot when we go to the races. So. Uh, Shelby County Speedway, race scs.com. Facebook page? Uh, not really, but there's a lot of uh, the drivers have all their Facebook pages and. You can get a lot of information from there. And again, that was Joe Proctor, announcer for Shelby County Speedway. We thank Joe for taking his time to sit down with us and apologize to Shelby County that it's taken us so long to get that interview on the air. Nonetheless, let's head over to turn four and wrap this baby up. It's the front stretch presented by Joe's Carding on AM590, Omaha's ESPN Radio. This week's Legend of Tomorrow is Ava Too Tough Grop. At just six years old, Ava is entering her third year of racing, along with learning her AB season's school she's learning the high line and low line at little sunset and mini e ava not only carries speed up the corners but carries an outstanding gpa outside of racing ava loves soccer volleyball singing dancing and even gets a little dirty on her dirt bike in bmx racing ava was ranked second in the state last year for girls six and under it's safe to say that this legend of tomorrow has a bit of a stiff upper lip. She's grown up at the track watching her dad, Matt, and brother Trey race their cards. Ava credits brother Trey as her source of inspiration and can't wait to beat him on the track. Even at the age of six, Ava understands the meaning of helping others as she raced at Mini E in support of Race for Life. She's quickly getting the reputation of too tough to tame, yet she also is known for her bubbly personality and wit. Ava Gropp, this week's Legend of Tomorrow on the Front Stretch. The Silver Dollar Nationals are returning to I-80 Speedway on July 18th, 19th, and 20th. Don't miss the nation's top USMTS, MLRA, and Lucas Oil dirt late model racers as they compete at Nebraska's fastest track. Come watch the nation's best dirt track racers compete for a $27,000 to win payout. Ticket prices and packages at 402-342-3453. The third annual Silver Dollar Nationals at I-80 Speedway, July 18th, 19th, and 20th. Are you ready for fast-paced, adrenaline-pumping, wheel-to-wheel racing right here in the Metro? Get to Joe's Karting in Council Bluffs and see what it's like to race real go-karts. Joe's Karting knows it's no fun to race go-karts at 10 miles per hour, so they ripped the governors out, and now the only restriction is how good you are at racing. It's full-throttle, white-knuckle racing every day of the week. Head over to joeskarting.com for hours, prices, and specials, or give Buddy a call today and set up your group races at 712-256-5278. Get ready for the victory lap as we make our way into turn four on the front stretch. Presented by Joe's Karting. Online at joeskarting.com. Just about ready to wrap up the show. We're heading into turn four here on the front stretch. Presented by Joe's Karting at Council Bluffs. Online at joeskarting.com. Don't forget, it's karting with a K. Booking prices, hours, so much more. You guys are kind of revamping the website a little bit, right? 
Uh, not the website, our social media campaign, that's right, Twitter, that's right. Facebook, uh, and it's going really, really, really good. It is. You guys are doing a fantastic job. It's uh, maybe we'll get them to run our Facebook page because the front stretch is kind of. I got a little bit yelled at on on Sunday because I was kind of Facebooking the, the race, but every couple of laps, cautions come out, and somebody got mad at me. Suck it up. Suck it up. Uh, let's talk about Auto Club Speedway. Fontana, California. The race kicks off at 2 p.m. today, and you can catch all of the action at Quaker Steak and Lube, the official watering hole of the front stretch. Our picks last weekend. Buddy, you took you took uh, Brad Keselowski, Andrew took Casey Kane, and I took Jeff Gordon. That really hurt. Uh, I think I actually fell back into fourth place with that pick. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty rough. I was <laughs> feeling pretty good about myself, and we were all running pretty much even until Jeff blew the right front and hit the wall and how many points are you behind me now? I don't want to talk about it. Okay. I really don't want to talk the about it. The worst part about it is though he has to say it. Yeah. I don't I it's uh, 40 some points. I think it's 40 yeah, 40 points exactly behind you. I could almost quit a week and you'd be all right. You'd still be behind me. I'll catch you. It's early. Don't worry about it. Your luck will run out. Don't make me tweet you. You don't even know what tweet is. No, I, no, uh, I don't. The picks this weekend, since I finished last, I will pick first, which it's my third straight week of picking <laughs> last. So th- this is the tough thing, is that I'm supposed to be the NASCAR guy. <laughs> and we're kicking your butt. Yeah. It doesn't help that my drivers have, well, I guess uh, Tony didn't wreck last week at uh, at Las Vegas, but... Do you have yeah, results from like last year's race at all for the yeah. from Auto Club? Yep. Because yeah. I don't even know who... We'll talk about that. I want to get to the picks before then, so that because I got to get any advantage I can. Okay, okay, that's fine. Uh, I'm taking Matt Kenseth, with Mister Consistency. Uh, I just need him to stay out of trouble. No blown engines, no racing behind Jeff Gordon. He just needs to stay out of trouble. So I'm taking Matt <laughs> Kenseth, uh, buddy. You're picking second. Who do you have? I think I'm going to take Old Smoke on this one. You're going to take Tony. Okay, that's that's. Uh, that's a pretty risky pick, but well, I'm okay well, with that. No, I'm okay with that. It's it's locked in. You can't change it now. Now he's going to win the race. <laughs> no, uh, I'm not going to change it. You know, in 21 career starts, he's got, you know, two wins, six top fives, and 12 top tens. How can you yeah. go wrong? It's not bad, but this is probably his worst start to a season. And we've all agreed that there that Stuart Haas's handling on a Gen 6 is rough. And Jimmy Johnson was 43rd after Daytona last year, and look where he yeah. finished, and right then, up there. And then Jimmy Johnson turned it around and had a really good year. Tony Stewart, however, has not. Not saying he can't do it. I'm just saying he's not having the Jimmy Johnson. Where's your love for smoke? It's there, but I'm a realist. uh, uh, Talk to the hand. Andrew, who are you taking? Um, I've been pretty consistent in the top five, and so has he. You think? I hate saying this, but I'm going to have to pick him this week. I'm going to have to pick Bad Brad. Because Brad's probably going to run in the top five again. He's running you know, good. Texas is not a wreckable track, so well, we're not going to Texas. Be, we're going to Auto I mean, Club. to California, <laughs> California. <laughs> That's okay. I, I'm okay. still at Texas. That's okay. So. I'm fine. That's fine. Uh, and the thing you and I talked about it. You can take Brad and Jimmy a couple of times a year, and that's pretty much a lock. Yeah, it, I think those are two of the most lockable picks. Every I wanted to can. pick Kyle Busch this weekend, but he just. I think a lot of his issues is he's driving too hard. And so he's hard on the equipment. You notice how he always does really good when the green flag comes out and for about 10 or 15 laps or, or the first portion of a green flag run, he'll just blow his way through the field. But then he'll run the tires off the thing and he'll start falling back. I, I, so I just I couldn't go with him. I had to go with Matt Kenseth, who I, I think he's got a little bit more consistency. If I remember right, Tony Stewart won the race last year, I think. Yep. Bud, so far you've picked the last year's winner at every single race so far. I think you're. you're yeah, I'm 100 percent correct because that's what he said three weeks in a row now. Yeah, that's okay. I, Good job. You know what? I can't make fun of him because he's 40 points in front of me, so ah. I can't fault his strategy. Uh, I'm just. I'm. I. I couldn't take Tony. I think Matt is running so much better. I'll take all the statistics you want, but this year is not a statistical year for Tony. And so I had to go with Matt. That's our picks for this week. You'll be able to uh, check out all the action. Again, uh, we'll, we'll kind of keep you up to date on the Facebook page. Let's talk about past winners at Auto Club. In 2012, again, we only go there once a year, so the top five. Carl Edwards got a top five. Kevin Harvick, fourth. Dale Earnhardt Jr., fifth. Sorry, third. Uh, Kyle Busch, second. And Tony Stewart did get the win. Now, uh, in 2011, you had uh, Newman, Kenseth, Busch, Johnson as your top four. And then Harvick got your victory. So, sorry, your top five. And then Harvick got the victory. Uh, Auto Club Speedway, we're going to see some pretty good speeds going in there, and I'm really excited about seeing this Gen 6 there. I think they learned a little bit at Las Vegas. Hopefully they'll be able to apply it here at, at Auto Club Speedway. And uh, I, I think we should see some action. I, I, I'm, it's going to be, you'll know exactly 
when Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano are racing each other because they'll turn and do a split screen and they will keep it on. They, they, they won't go to commercial when those guys are away. I, I want to talk really quickly. I know that the nationwide race happened last night, so this could be irrelevant, but how about that Kyle Larson? He is really, really good, I think. I, I was incredibly impressed with him at Bristol last weekend. Uh, he dro- It's his what second, third race? Uh, oh, well, he's fourth. raced off four. Yeah, yep. uh, in a nationwide car, and he's up there racing. Like, I mean, he—you could see there was some inexperience there, but he was battling Kyle Busch for a win, and that's got to be a huge ego boost for him. I mean, not ego, but confidence booster for him that he almost beat Kyle Busch, and it was the second closest finish at Bristol Motor Speedway, bested only by Denny Hamlin and uh, and Kyle Busch's finish a few years ago. But it was by about a quarter panel, and I think, man, I, I wish Kyle Larson would have won. That would have been, that would have been awesome. But that's think, a kid to watch. Holy I really, cow. I really agree with you a ton. Just because I've seen him race a lot of the midgets and stuff like that. But he's like a Kyle Busch. <laughs> he drives the wheels off it as hard as he can. Yeah, and that's what's going to get him in trouble. But he is really good. I was watching the post race interview. As I, you know, sadly enough, I make time for that. But he was talking about how his finish at Daytona during the K and N race. And he was scrutinized because he did dump the guy. Coming out of turn four, I mean, he just straight up wrecked him. And they were asking, they said, with that history, were you going to dump Kyle again, Kyle Bush, to get the win? And he said, I thought about it, but that's not the kind of racer I am. And I didn't want to get that reputation. I wanted to get the win, but I wanted to beat him racing him, not wrecking him. And so that's good that a, a young guy like that. And then Kyle Bush kind of came back and said, if he'd have wrecked me, I'd have made his career miserable because I'd have kept wrecking him. So I, I I would think Kyle would. I don't think you want to mess yeah. with Kyle Bush. No, 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 I don't think no, so no. either. There's there's a couple of guys out there you don't want to mess with because they've made it very apparent that they will return they, the favor. They're very fast and they don't care. Jeff Gordon has really gotten that reputation of don't mess with me because I will come back and get you. Kyle Bush, same thing. Danny Hamlin will just tweet you. Yeah, Denny Hamlin will have a Twitter war with you. Yeah. And he'll get you good. You ain't ever going to catch me. <laughs> That's going to do it here on the front stretch. Don't forget all of the NASCAR action at the official watering hole of the front stretch. Quaker Steak and Lube and Council Bluffs. I, you got to get down there and get the boom, boom shrimp. Boom, boom shrimp. It's please. an appetizer and it is phenomenal. In get fact, two. I'm headed down there in a little bit. I'm going to get me one. How big are they? They're not very big at all. It's a six pack little jumbo shrimp. I mean, you can eat them, and it's like eating a couple of uh, fried pickles. I got ZZ Top in my head. Boom, boom, boom. Mm. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Shrimp. Get to Quaker Steak and Lou in Council Bluffs, the official watering hole. The action starts today at 2 p.m. Again, uh, Andrew in the lead takes Brad Kozlowski. Buddy in second takes Tony Stewart. I'm in fourth, and I took Matt Kenseth. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next weekend when we will break down. Uh, everything that happened at Fontana, California. Have yourself a great weekend. Thank you for joining us. This is the Front Stretch on AM 590, Omaha's ESPN Radio. In 1999, Wade Cross decided he was tired of overpaying for shocks, so he created FX Shocks. Now FX suspension customers reach across the United States with countless wins and championships, including national champion in three major IMCA classes, plus Super Nationals champions in all four of the Saturday night's main events. Get your FX Shocks today. One-on-one consultation is waiting for you at 308-383-9609. 308-383. Are you ready for fast-paced, adrenaline-pumping, wheel-to-wheel racing right here in the Metro? Get to Joe's Karting in Council Bluffs and see what it's like to race real go-karts. Joe's Karting knows it's no fun to race go-karts at 10 miles per hour, so they ripped the governors out, and now the only restriction is how good you are at racing. It's full-throttle, white-knuckle racing every day of the week. Head over to joescarting.com for hours, prices, and specials, or give Buddy a call today and set up your group races at 712-256-5278.